Hey friends, coming to you from MSB Airport. We are about to go down south where it's a lot warmer. You know, here in Minnesota, winters get pretty long and we are actually headed down to Florida Keys. We're gonna start in Miami and make our way down to Key West. So come along with us. We are about to hop on the plane, so we'll see you there. Our journey begins in Key Largo at the stunning Kona Kai Resort. Nestled on the beachfront, it feels like a mix between a luxury, artsy, beachy bungalow resort. From relaxing by the pool to going on a sunset paddle, Kona Kai Resort set the perfect tone for our Florida Keys adventure, especially after a late night flight. First stop in the morning, getting our caffeine and pastry fix at Cafe Mocha in Isla Mirada. Got our coffee, got our croissants, and now time to go fishing. Next stop in Isla Mirada, we met up with Captain Matt Bellinger of Bamboo Charters. All right, so we made it to Isla Mirada. We are on Captain Matt's boat of Bamboo Charters. We're targeting several different species today, apparently sea trout, jacks, black drum, um, and the sharks are apparently biting too. So we're gonna go fish in the Everglades National Park. So let's go. So what we don't use for bait goes home for dinner. These are the same shrimp that you go and pay 25 bucks a pound for. All right, got my first fish into the boat. It's a, a, a red fish. It's got that spot here on the tail. The eye spot is what it's called, right? The eye yeah. spot. <laughs> Robbie's in Isla Mirada is a must visit. It's a famous spot that was voted number one for tourists and for good reason. The food, check out my whole snapper and the colorful shops, and most famously, the opportunity to hand feed massive tarpons. If you're gonna go anywhere in the Keys, this should be at the top of the list. Before leaving Key Largo, we had to try some stone crabs. So off to Key Largo fisheries. From fresh seafood to the vibrant atmosphere, it's a seafood lover's paradise. All right, so we are at Key Largo Fisheries now for dinner, and they are known for their stone crab, so that's what we got. This is so good. It is the best and the only stone crab I've ever had, but they have set my expectations up here. It's so good. And then we also got some lobster tacos, hogfish, pistones, rice and beans, steamed clams. So pretty much everything in the Florida Keys that I came for is right here on this table. <laughs> The stone crabs here are so good and super sustainable. They only harvest one leg at a time to give it the opportunity to grow back. Should I do mustard or butter? I'm gonna do the butter this time. <laughs> Excellent. There's gonna be none left. <laughs> we ended our first full day in the Keys in the vibrant Murata Ways Arts and Cultural District. We're getting a taste of local craft brews at Florida Keys Brewing Company. All right, we're in the original brewing area for the Florida Keys Brewing Company, and these actually do have beer in them. They're aging them in barrels, and here it, lots of beer in there. Yeah. This is where we keep everything once it's pegged in can. And we got hops in the back too. <laughs> nice. Okay. Cool. Hops. Spend some time in there alone. <laughs> I was joking during the summer. I was like, can we please just put my office back here? The guided tour, the colorful atmosphere, and of course, exceptional beer made for the perfect laid-back experience. 
The next morning, Marathon stole our hearts and our stomachs with brunch at Castaway Waterfront Restaurant and Sushi Bar. Brunch with the Lionfish King, John Mirabella, was a unique experience. He's a former submarine engineer for the U.S. Navy and ended up moving to Marathon, bought this restaurant, is now famous for being a fisherman and diver with an initiative to remove the invasive lionfish from the Florida Keys waters. So this is uh, Lionfish Tempura Benedict. Lionfish is an invasive species that came from the Indo-Pacific and it has overpopulated the waters between the northern coast of South America all the way through the Gulf of Mexico and up the east coast of the United States. They are a venomous predator, but their meat is wonderful and sweet and so since they don't have a natural predator here, I've taken that on as my role in life to be their predator and we found out that you know, maybe the fish won't eat them, but people will. The lionfish tempura benedict was melt in your mouth delicious, and seeing the king of the jungle roll get made was out of this world. So fresh and so good. There you go. Lionfish, king of the jungle roll. Beautiful. Time to hop on the overseas highway and head to Key West. <laughs> Our home base, the Capitana Key West, welcoming us with its stunning views, modern accommodations, and balconies overlooking the pool and Gulf of Mexico, the perfect tropical oasis. Also in Key West, we booked a snorkeling trip with Fury Water Adventures, exploring the third largest coral barrier reef system, that's a mouthful, just seven miles from Key West, was a snorkeling experience to remember. We saw so many sharks, tropical fish, and got plenty of time in the water and under the sun. Key West festive atmosphere continues at Half Shell Raw Bar. We literally had a boatload of food. Check out this boat filled with fresh raw seafood, including oysters, clams, and also our second round of stone crabs, lobsters, and shrimp. I even got a holiday cocktail, which was so fitting with the marina decked out in Christmas decor. Do you think we can finish this all? It's a challenge of having success. Our visit happened to be when the Key West hometown holiday parade was happening. Duval Street was decked out with floats and festive music. It was a joyful and festive way to celebrate the holiday season in Key West. After the parade, we experienced one of the most scandalously delicious parts of our trip, better than sex desserts in Key West. Yep, that is what it's called. From between my red velvet sheets, cheesecake, and the French kiss wine, the intimate dessert experience was the perfect way to sweeten our Keys adventure. Okay, so we are at Blue Heaven now, and this place came very highly recommended by friends, family, and we're excited to try the food here. It's breakfast all day on Sundays, so I get to try the breakfast. I got the surf and turf. We got the avocado omelet and fruit, Bloody Mary. It's gonna be a good breakfast. Key West is rich in history, and we explored the iconic Hemingway Home and Museum. From the six toed cats to the writing studio, it was a glimpse into the life of the legendary Ernest Hemingway. My husband is a big military history buff, so of course we had to visit Fort Zachary Taylor in Key West. Built in the mid-19th century, it played pivotal roles in the Civil War and Spanish-American War. We embarked on an eco-tour next, with Honest Eco in search of dolphins and a breathtaking Key West sunset. And boy, do we get the best sunset or what? This is an intimate cruise, we only had six people on board and enjoyed fresh fruit service, got views of schooners, and did a little bit of relaxing after a long day of fun in the Keys. Our final dinner concludes with a farewell feast at Tin Cup Chalice Bar and Chill inside Margaritaville Beach House in Key West. Island provisions with a southern twist, the blackened grouper piccata, and the poolside atmosphere were the perfect farewell. And there you have it, our escape to the Keys from Miami to Key West. I've included some links below to help you plan your next escape to the Keys. If you enjoyed this journey, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, happy travels!